What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 5 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen campaign. So as we saw last time, Archeon met Kolik Sun Eater at the very aptly named Challenge Stone and cast the Great Mountain God down, earning his allegiance. And this means Kolik will be available to us in four turns, I believe, and oh, by the looks of it, and Zazel is already good to go. Uh, which means we'll be getting him on the field in about 30 seconds. Uh, what we're going to do this time around is we're going to be sending Archeon southward through the Orky territories to basically destroy Grimgore's faction, or at the very least damage it so heavily that Archeon can leave Kukar and the Cornate army behind to deal with the rest of... Uh uh, to deal with the rest of Grimgore's faction. Uh, before we get started on all of that, however, we did once again reach the Allegiance Threshold. Allegiance? Uh, <laughs> not quite the same thing. Engagement Threshold. And uh, thus this episode will be an hour long, and the offer does still stand, but since we reached the fifth episode, and we will lower it slightly. Uh, 400 likes and 50 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. Now, Gulator, we're going to need you to declare war on Wolfric immediately and let's get Azazel up and running so and do this please too bad we can't uh, ask you to declare wars the sorrel might be in trouble here if this guy generates anybody but it's okay uh, go to tour real quick what do we have at the longship graveyard not too much uh, let's hopefully I mean, we should be able to be able to auto resolve it this is probably gonna hurt the demon spew but mm. Eh, some damage to the demon spew, but to be fair, there's not much we can do about that. Uh, Gift of Vassal is grayed out, presumably because the Null Farlings are dead, but what can you do about that? Now we've got the Longship Graveyard, not for long, and now it has casualty replenishment increased to, to the port here. Well, isn't that convenient? Uh, we are also... Hmm. I was thinking maybe we head outside the settlement to get our mana back, but I think the replenishment is going to be more important at this time. And then, hey you sir, Azazel, get on the field right now, and we'll give you up immediately, actually not immediately, I was going to say, and give you up immediately these two Marauders of Slanish units, but they'll heal up better in the Longship Graveyard. Also, Azazel, let's see what you've got, my friend. Uh... All right, okay, this is not horrible. He's going to be very point-hungry because he's a hybrid lord with both the caster tree and the fighty tree, which means these points are possibly too much. And on the other hand, I suppose we don't necessarily have to go fully through his casting tree and just go halfway through it. And we can always get another Slaneshi caster to use Phantasmagoria and Slicing Shards, although both of those are pretty insane spells uh, when you uh, when you can land them on a big blob. Now, what the heck do you do, Azazel? And domineering area hex, and I just want to see... Embedded heroes. Okay, so he likes embedded heroes, but otherwise, it doesn't look like he buffs any unit in particular uh, from the roster, which means we could do whatever we please uh, with uh, with his particular army, which is kind of interesting. We'll have to see. We'll put some Hell Scourge chosen in there. They're kind of terrible, but uh, uh, what can you do? Uh, the overwhelm trade that they have is still fairly strong, and they're unique to Slanash, so I do feel like we should probably use them. And. I mean, I suppose we could also use them in Sigvald's army. I'll, I'll think about it. We'll, 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 we'll deal something. We'll do something there. We gotta make sure that we differentiate Sigvald's army from Azazel's. Now, that is done. And Archeon, I believe it's your turn to move. Ooh, actually, I just remembered something. Kukar, you, sir, have earned your path to glory. You are ready to devote to corn, though it's gonna cost, wow, like half of our souls? Damn, dude. You, sir, are very soul-hungry when you should be skull-hungry. Mm. Oh, well. Uh, I mean, I guess we don't really need the souls right now. Fine, do it. Well, let's see what this gives us. Uh, we got Gate of Corn, Unearthly Reflexes, Melee Defense plus 10, Speed plus 20. Sure. This 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 fine. Uh, Gate of Corn allows us to summon blood letters. Chaos Armor gives melee damage reflection and missile block chance. And Unbreakable is just gonna make you stronger. All right. 
All seems decent. I don't know whether we will be ascending this guy to demonhood or not, but we will uh, and we'll think about it. At the end of the day, we'll probably do one lord that's ascended and one not one that is not ascended. But I would assume that the ascended lords buff demons more, so it will have to be uh, something we think about it as to what the army composition is going to look like. I was thinking about making Kukar Blood Eater sort of the hound master guy, uh, with all these flesh hounds available to him. And the uh, Hounds of the Blood Hunt as well, which I still think isn't too bad of an idea. Also, if we're going to start making him into an army for Archaeon to transfer some stuff, we might as well begin on that right now. Uh, let's see. What do we need in his army? We could maybe use a couple chariots? Well, no, you know what? If the Hounds... Ugh. We'll probably still need at least a couple of Chaos Knights or something along those lines, so maybe some Marauder Horsemen. I don't want to go overboard, because frankly, we are going to have a difficult time affording all of this, but uh, let's give him a couple of Horsemen. And actually, Harkon will also need one, two, three, four. Yeah, he's probably going to need more Knights, especially if we transfer these Knights of Zinj to somebody else, but uh, yeah. And uh, let's get him a couple of Marauders. Once again, I don't want to go overboard, because we're bleeding cash now and transfer the marauders and you know what Archeon get this chaos warrior for yourself yes expensive and will forego I think the aspiring champs I'd love to get them but you know expense all right completed a little bit of a mission got a little bit of a reward and now we need to head to Gorger Rock so that's where we shall go and I guess Kukar you're gonna go there as well can't upgrade. No, no, no. We, we don't have the uh, searing branding iron. As opposed to all the other non-searing branding irons. And oh, you are in the way of Archaon. Don't do that. He doesn't like that. You shouldn't be in the way of Archaon. Ever. Anyway, that is that for this turn. Not really much to do, so I guess we're going to end the turn and continue doing what we do best, which is attacking nearby territories. Now, there was a little bit of a consensus in that we should probably attack Throg or betray his alliance and take his stuff, which is a little bit unfortunate, but if it's the consensus, then it's con then it's the consensus. The reason I wanted to ally with him and not deal with him is I really do don't want to spend like half the campaign fighting Norska as I don't know it just doesn't interest me all that much and oh hello there's a full stack here oh well that's exciting we got a battle already uh tribute from vassals plus 20 percent swell but probably irrelevant because we're making very little right now which means i think we'll take the control and the leadership instead i won't give this a read however unruly vassals have risen to question your might should you put on a demonstration of strength or challenge them directly eh, mass executions why not what does this say your vessels now wait now uh, a set of brutal executions so shall make it known that you are not to be taken for granted yeah, I think I think people should already know that about Archaon at this point in the uh, in the timeline. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, Throg's taken a little bit much in the way of territory, and I didn't want to fight Norskins all the time, or frankly, I didn't really want to fight other Chaos all the time when there are so many other factions that we should be fighting to differentiate the sort of battle styles and get variety, but. You know, if we have to do something, we have to do something. Uh, one question. Does anybody know or remember? Are you able to... Actually, this answers my question. Never mind. I want to know whether this guy could be vassalized, whether the Legion of Chaos could. I feel like I remember in my Valkia campaign, I wanted to vassalize him. And Valkia had, like, all the vassals. But he refused and would just rather die than be vassalized. Which was a shame. Uh, Azazel, you have a bunch of stuff on you. And we're gonna give you more stuff. Well, let's see what you got here. Talisman of Endurance. Frankly, that should probably go on Kolek, but it'll be a little bit before he's up anyway. Uh, get you that Helm of Many Eyes. Mm, we have no weapons. I guess we give you a Potion of Strength. And, oh, you had the Scepter of Stability. That was the only scepter that we had okay well there isn't much in the way of choice felman ingerson you've got a ton of norskin warhounds well and we've got warhounds ourselves and actually that reminds me you go to azazel we need our fourth warhound damn 1700 to raise a single doggo that's a little bit steep game a little bit steep 
And then once again, what can you do? Galator, attack, please. Are you gonna fight? He is gonna fight. Oh, wow. And Pyrrhic victory. Oh, my. Uh, you are underestimating Gulator, I fear. And you're certainly underestimating the fact that Azazel is coming in as a reinforcement. Away we go. Alrighty, heck of a speech there, Gillator. I am always happy to hear a long speech from our uh, from our characters. Also, he's got his armor, and it's looking pretty great, in my opinion. Anyway, here we go, facing off against the Norskins, and it'll be some doggo on a doggo action. I know some of you are into that. We've got the Norskin Ice Wolves, uh, or Norskin Warhounds, rather, uh, versus the uh, Hounds of Decay. Snow Doggos uh, versus poison doggos or ice doggos whatever i suppose the ice wolves would have been the more icy doggos and perhaps that we could have uh, had these guys face off against uh, chaos warhounds but you know close enough close enough for our purposes plus they've got six of their doggos and we've only got four of the poison doggos so i think it evens out anyway i'm gonna speed this up for a few seconds as we are going to allow azazel to enter the field and just because he's not leading an army doesn't mean he can't fight together with Gulator. and there he is what's your speed buddy it's at 1 to 12 all right so just like malagor you can apply yourself wherever it is you want and you can do so fairly quickly we'll see how effective azazel is as we uh, send him into combat against the enemy lord. Nice. Alright, he does have to get there, and I guess so do his marauders of Slanesh. Just watching him take his first uh, uh, first flight, but let's speed this up once again until everybody's in position. We're going to send the two units of marauders of Slanesh over on this flank with a little bit of backup from the two or from two of the units of the Hounds of Decay. Azaz is going to head directly for the enemy lord, while the piles of Forsaken and Chaos Spawn are going to book it forward towards the enemy. I always, uh, I always get amused by the way they uh, they run into combat, both the Chaos uh, spawn and uh, the Marauders were in Forsaken, rather, alike. Still, we gotta upgrade them to Forsaken of Nurgle, but it's gonna take a while, so and we're just going to have to be patient on that one. Gulator in the middle of the fray, whacking away, and Azazel has uh, landed and is going after uh, the enemy lord, who's still pretty okay, but being debuffed by the Fear of Aramar and and uh, the Blight Swarm as well, which is spreading out to the enemies. Between the Blight Swarm ability that we have on Gulator, as well as the uh, Miasma he keeps spamming, he can debuff the enemy fairly well. Now, how's that balance power looking? How's that HP looking? Over on the flanks, it looks like our doggos are, are wrecking the enemy doggos, so uh, we know whose doggos are superior. Two of the enemy marauder hunters with javelins are currently engaged and by our two feral manticores, once again getting plenty of value out of those two units, and while those two units are engaged, we've got doggos moving in, ready to strike those marauder hunter javelins in the back. Azazel has nearly killed off the enemy lord with a little bit of help from Gulator here. Slanesh and Nerf Oh, working together. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's an interesting combination. If nothing else, gonna drop that Firestorm, the only ability currently that still has that darn targeting rune. Uh, but uh, since I guess the uh, the mod doesn't modify things that come from other mods, it does make sense. Anyway, the Doggos have arrived, and the Chaos Spawn are gonna back them up with, while the Manticore distracted uh, those Marauder Hunters with Javelins, and it looks like those will break fairly quickly. And to make sure they break even quicker, we got more Doggos running around. Doggos will peel away and head into a rear charge into some Marauder Spears, sending them flying over the lines. Or at least some of them. 
and making sure that they route fairly quickly. And I'm sure the poison helps uh, the uh, regular marauders as well, as they do need to survive in order to make themselves for a second. Oh, wow, that doggo just jumped right into the screen. All right, it looks like with that, the enemy army will shatter. Azazel will hunt down uh, the enemy lord. Oh, nice. He got the kill by with the uh, drop-down animation. Uh, very good job, buddy. We'll be seeing plenty more of you as we get you an army later on. Uh, but for now, keep on helping Gulator out and uh, leech some XP. Well, I guess Gulator is a lower level than you, but nonetheless. Anyway, a little bit of chasing to do, but we can do it off-screen. All right, very nice, very nice. There wasn't too much point in trying to chase those warhounds down, but uh, that's all right. All the marauders are done, and we should be able to auto-resolve those easy enough as well. Uh, speaking of warhounds, looks like our own did fairly well in here, and our good uh, pestilent doggos are going to need names, folks. There's four of them in this army, and we're going to keep at least four in this army. So uh, name them if you got them. Uh, Forsaken did pretty darn no okay as well, especially this unit. Damn, 25k damage almost. I wonder why you did so much better than everybody else. Perhaps, uh, were they one of the ones that fought the Berserkers, perhaps? Hmm. Well, either way. Uh, either way, they did quite nice there. Azazel also got to play around a little bit, and while it'll be a while before we get him his own army, he can at least follow uh, a Gulator around until we can readily afford it. Uh, we do have 11% replenishment, and replenishing is going to be reasonably tough here. Or 1700 money. We gotta go with replenishment. And we'll still have to auto-resolve the rest of this as well. And a shrieking blade, and what the heck are you doing, game? Why did why did it go back to Archeon? Unlock hero, Harold Hammerstorm. Oh, Harry Hammer smashes with us now. Oh, that's good. Uh, that's good indeed. Can we reach Gorger? Oh, we can't even reach Gorger to rock. Oh, well. And I think we read this one last time, unless I'm mistaken. I think I read this when we got the quest, so yeah. Uh, now Harold... Or Harald. Looking fantastic as always. You have leadership plus five for the army experience gain for characters immunity to vampiric uh, attrition, which will actually help if you join Archeon's army and then stand there and stay there, rather, while we move through Vlad's territories. What else do you do? Perfect vigor for yourself. Vigor. Ooh. Flaming attacks for the entire army. Yeah, you're going with Archeon. Flaming attacks for the entire army will definitely be nice. Granted, Arcan already has it, but uh, just going for lots and lots of fire damage for the entire army is certainly going to work. Uh, actually, Arcan, this will mean... Oh, you actually have one space for this guy. But you'll need another space for your sorcerer, which means you're going to have to give up those Chaos Warrior halberds. First of all, you're going to go right here near to Gorger Rock, since that's where we're going to strike. Kukar, you're going to take those... Ca hmm. I guess we could take them away from you next turn. All right. I think you can't reach Arcan, and we may want to raid with both of you. And then you're going to move here. I guess we could have probably healed up that giant a teensy bit more, but whatever. Harold, you're in here now. Nice. And Archeon, I didn't notice that you had a level, so we should probably apply that. And, ooh, yes, Ascension to Demonhood, all authority plus one. And we have the Demonic Attribute, which means our physical resistance... Was it a, what was it before? No, it was nothing, and then it's plus 20%, which ain't bad. And then, of course, we will begin to crumble. Or whatever the, the dead banish... Mm, whatever the uh, demonic version of Carmel is. A uh, Lord of the it's, it's banishment. A uh, Lord of the End Times ability as well. It's only a single use, but not a horrible debuff. And it is all over the map as well. So it's a sudden leadership and melee damage shock that could potentially be quite nicely if we use it at the right time. Anyway, Archeon, you stay there, sir. Uh, Azazel and Gulator, you've got some dark fortresses to take for us, but uh, let's just have you to resolve this real quick and right here i imagine you can't reach the altar of the crimson harvest yet and you are short one unit 
actually. I mean, I guess we're going to need more Marauders and more spawn in here, so I guess we could raise another Marauder. And frankly, the regular Chaos Spawn are completely useless to us. Oh, we could just straight up... Hmm. Oh, he could just straight up raise a Forsaken. They cost twice as much as a raising a Marauder, though. And then, how much does it cost to... Oh. Actually costs quite a bit to turn them into Forsaken anyway. 720. So it actually, you don't actually save much. You're better off just doing it directly. Alright, that's fine. Uh, you two are going to be Forsaken. You will be Forsaken as well. I'll work on Forsaken there. And you can be a new Forsaken that joins us. Alright. Hello, Tour. Continue. Okay, okay. Obviously, we're auto resolving this. Please don't hurt us too much. And I didn't see it with the damage the demons spew badly. And I think we'll heal up again. Once again, we don't want to be wasting our time on garbage little battles. We are not able to leave our territory and yet not able to enter in camps. That's a little bit unfortunate. I was hoping to heal with you a little bit more. Neither of you are, in fact. Huh. Wow, Longship Graveyard goes basically all the way to the edge of the territory here, rather than uh, between them, which is kind of interesting. I guess that means you're going to channel instead. Channel away, sir, and then you can channel away. And you both have levels as well. All right, Gulator, we need you to get Root Marcher, and then we'll start moving through Chaos of Vanguard to start buffing up all those Forsaken uh, further. And we'll need to turn them into Forsaken of Nurgle as soon as possible, so we'll be turning them Nurgle, or we'll be getting the Nurgle tech and next. And as somebody pointed out, the Nurgle gifts will give us some very useful stuff, so we'll go through that as well. You, Hordred Demon Tamer, are going to get spoils for the additional post-battle loot, but we will be turning you to Nurgle basically as soon as we can, which will frankly be next level, assuming that we can afford the souls. Zazel, you... Do not yet have an army. You will probably get some use out of Chaos Vanguard, I've no doubt about it, but for now, we could get Supple and Spry, post-battle chance of stealing a magic. It doesn't actually do all that much for us right now, though. Mm. Or we save all the points. You know what? I think we save all of Azazel's points to get through his level 12. It won't buff his army all that much. Um, but there is a bunch of nice stuff in here nonetheless, and I do like the souls gained from battles plus 40% he gets on top of the devoted to chaos that he gets, so we could use him as a soul farm, so and that ain't bad either. Uh, Hivold Helnox, you are going to be Archaon's personal sorcerer, and oh, I liked one of the name suggestions for Archaon's personal sorcerer, so you, assuming you survive, will be the Chronicler. And it also makes sense for Zinch and Sorcerer as well. Oh, will his name revert if once we devote him to Zinch? I guess we'll find out. We are also going to send him over here to do the mission for Parchment and Ink so that the Blue Scribe's mission is complete there and then send him around to Archeon. Also, I can't believe you can't reach this. Man, so close, and yet so far. Uh, unassigned skill points, sure. Building upgrades available, outpost available. I guess we can briefly check the building upgrades, but I'm not... Uh, I'm doubtful that there's anything useful here. Uh, Eastern Oblast, we should probably trade you. Ice Spewer, we can trade... Hmm. Ouch. You know what, we'll wait a little bit, I think. Unless I'm mistaken, last episode, yeah. We're not paying him to take the territory, that would just... No. I don't like the idea. And if there are Dark Fortress things to build, I mean, 5.1k is a little bit too expensive for the loot heap, at least for now. And the rest is fine as it is, or at the very least, we don't want to spend any money on it, so we're not gonna. On the bright side with Kukar Blood Eater here, we can use him to attack Gorger Rock while Archaon moves so that not as many moves are wasted. I would like Archeon to... Uh, Wolfric, hello. Oh, do you want peace immediately? Yeah, you do want peace immediately. That's funny. Poor guy. I feel somewhat bad, but not really. Alrighty, and we are good. Alright, so we're going to attack you, sir. You are currently at war with the Legion of Asgore. Alright, well, we'll make them like us a little bit more. Declare... Okay, uh, join war against Grimgore. Yes, give us some money. 
2000? Hmm. Wait, actually out of curiosity. Knights of Kalidor, 13. I was wondering whether we could vassalize him just like that, but no. Maybe he'll get weaker, and maybe we'll still be able to, by joining war against the Knights of Kalidor, as I've no doubt that we'll get into a war with them eventually. Anyway, for now, give us your cash. And, you know what, let's check the rest of the Diplo while we're at... Oh, Dolgan won a trade. I thank you, Dolgan. That's uh, just swell. Anything else important we could do in alliance with Mulder, but we actually want to vassalize them. May have to attack them to do so. It's a distinct possibility. Also, Chronicler, sir, move to Granite Spikes. In the meantime, this. Does it warrant a battle? Ooh, Blackfang will warrant a battle. There's nearly a full stack at the def of defenders there, so we can go there. I'd almost like to invest in the Cornate army immediately so that the two can attack together. Uh, oh, but we need to do that in our own territory. Well, darn. Okay, fine. Alright, uh, Archaeon, we're going to have you switch to regular stance, and then you are going to switch to summoning and hit Gorge or Rock. And then this should be very much unresolvable. Did it hurt Archaeon's giants? Yeah, a little bit, but that was somewhat expected. Uh, we'll occupy the place. And you got a Gorby's Chariot, Prince Ogrex. Well, isn't that lovely? Are we going to keep you on the Gorby's Chariot, however, is the question. It doesn't cause bleed or anything like that, and it'll make you a much bigger target than the uh, Chaos Steed will. I think for now we'll keep you on the Chaos Steed for the purpose of assassinating single entities, and then we'll figure it out afterwards. Magic is weakness. We are going to keep going through that to get the additional campaign movement range. It ain't much, but we still need it. And speaking of campaign movement range, I did take a look at the various gifts between the episodes, just so I could familiarize as to which techs only you'd want to go for first, and I noticed this. Solanish has Endless March. Campaign movement range plus 30% for all armies. Yes, at a cost of 10%, which is a lot, but 30% movement range is very, is very, very strong and very much worth it. So we'll probably try to go for Solanish as well as Nurgle reasonably quickly. Uh, anyway, Kukar... Do we want to summon you some more Marauders, or are you okay? I mean, it's gonna be costly to... Ooh, it's gonna be like another thousand gold per turn, which I think we can't afford right now. Alright, you know what? You stay there for now, Archeon. Uh, do you just go to Blackfang? Oh, we could actually move you around to Carrick Vrag. Do we have defenders there? I mean, we do, but nothing crazy either. What's that Eagle Ares? Ares, uh... Kukar should definitely be able to take that. If we take care of Vrag, we can move down to Blackfang immediately after. Yeah, alright, fine, we'll do that. To Vrag you go, Arcan. And then Kukar can head down to the Ares once he has a few more units. Alright, that works for me. Next up is Zazel and Gulator. You've got places to be as well. And the Ultra of the Crimson Harvest, what do we have? No defenders, meaning it's free real estate. So, I guess we attack with the Zazel. Because... Okay. Because Azazel will get more souls out of it. Not that we really need the souls any for anything as yet, but we will eventually. Uh, Azazel, go. Alright, auto-resolve that by the looks of it. Don't hurt the... Ah, the poor demon spew keep getting hurt. They started off hurt and they're gonna continue being hurt. Auto resolve. Why do you hate them? Can't get the vessel, but it's a dark fortress anyway, and we'll definitely take it for ourselves. Hey, Skull of Katam. We can use these on the beastmen as well, but that uh, bonus spell mastery ain't too bad, so not a complaint. Path to Glory unlocked for Hordred Demon Tamer, and that is our exalted hero. So we could devote him to Nurgle. He doesn't have the devote to Nurgle trade, unfortunately. Although, do we spend the 2,000 now? I mean, we're going to have to spend it eventually, so we might as well spend it now. Juice Beth, what do we have here? A vigor loss reduction for Chosen. And... Corruption of the Father. Hmm. I don't care for melee defense when defending. It's basically completely useless. It's an absolutely garbage trait. And Nurgle corruption is completely irrelevant as well. Could at least be some Nurgle authority. 
And yeah, in what situations would we ever de be defending? The rest of this is fine, especially the Vigor Loss Reduction for Chosen is actually fairly significant, but it isn't good for this particular army, which is a shame. Uh, which means we'll probably have to send him to Festus's army, since this is going to be a Forsaken force, and it's going to stay that way. Now, you, sir... Ooh, hello, what do we have here? Mysterious Island, can you reach this? You can reach this in one go. I, ho I hope you can heal at sea. It's contested. Uh, mm. You know what? And we could land a Dieter's off in next turn. Uh, don't go there. Oh. Actually, wait. Can you go to Dieter's off in a single turn? Actually, by the looks of it, you can. Which means, Zazel, you're going to leave the altar. And Gulator are going to head into it. And you are going to rejoin Gulator's army. Zazel, you're going to channel. And then we'll move Gulator out next turn with him having healed up as much as possible. Oh, there's a little tiny army here. That's cute. I fear that we can't leave Azazel to it, though, because he doesn't... Well, he wouldn't. He might be able to kill it, but kind of irritating to have to fight that. And I'm not sure that we will, but anyway. Uh, that looks good to me. Alter the Crimson Harvest. Let's immediately build you some money stuff, so raid trophies. And double check Diplo one more time. Grimgor, you want a piece out? Ugh, look at the Servants of the Conclave. Minus 12.3. I wonder if you can pay them off for that. Because it would be swell if you could. Uh, various orcs want to be friends. Various chaos dwarfs want to be friends. But we're going to, you know, attack them. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> They won't be willing to vassalize otherwise. Outpost available in turn. And this should complete Demonic March as well, or Endless March, or whatever the version of March we're currently researching is, for the additional 5% campaign movement range for all armies. I really want to stack as much movement range as possible. I got really spoiled by Torox and his infinity movement abilities, and I'm disinclined to... Oh, our raiding army just spawned. Oh, a rebel army just spawned. Something spawned. Uh, yeah, Torox, move good. Move good. Uh, I begins Confederation World Walkers in Varg. They just got more territory. I'm really gonna need to work on these damn darn World Walkers. Yeah, there's Infernal March. That was the name of the tech. Okay. Back to you, Kent. I mean, uh, we want not Demon Mants, but Rusted Branding Iron. So the question is, do we want to move through Charioteer and Demon Mount, giving us the Warband upgrades for Doom Knight's Gorby's Chair? It's probably going to be a while before we get too much use out of that. And this gives us Warband upgrades, Chaos Chariots, and Hellstriders. Eh, not crazy useful right now. Now this gives us Magical Attack for Knights. 15 turns. It's 15 turns either way. And it'll be a long time until we upgrade Chosen, but the extra experience for Chaos Warriors wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I think we'll do this through Profane Weaponry. We might even... Hmm. Um, we might stop and grab the Gaze of the Dark Gods first to get A, Forsaken Blessing, and B, Additional Authority, and C, Control and Chaos Undivided uh, and Gift before heading to the Branding Iron and then a Maddening Gifts, which is where we will get the uh, Gift of Nurgle. Yeah, somewhere along those lines. Anyway, yeah, what are you? You are a Rebel Army. Can we reach you through this? No. Which is a little bit of a shame, because if we take care of Vrag, I'm pretty sure this rebel army disappears? Though I could be wrong. Alright, well, Kukar, I would like you to head right here. Looks like this guy's building up. But hopefully you can take him out yourself. Uh, and go into raiding stance right there. Rated for 96, but we'll uh, get those doggos and stuff in your army afterwards. As Drag to Crusha. Hmm. He heard about Azag the Slaughterer, and he liked the name, and that's how we got that. Uh, reminds me of Astra Gruel Iron Pick. You? The Kirik Varag. Yeah, okay, at least this is not worth fighting, though it does continue hurting our precious giants, our, our twin giants. Occupy the place, and is the rebel army destroyed? No, it isn't. Huh, well, that'll mean another little fight. Uh... 
I'm really hoping they don't besiege us. In fact, I think we can't risk it. It'll mean less healing, but I'd rather not risk them sieging us and annoying us that way. And next up, we have another level for Archie. Now, he does have Knights of the Herald and Abyss Forged Armor now, so the Chosen Ones isn't going to be particularly useful. Uh, Distinguished Champions is useful, but we can't get any use out of it right now. I guess we could start moving through Hammer and Anvil to buff, the, uh, and buff his Chaos Knights. He is going to have a lot of them, after all. To bet he doesn't have any kind of casualty replenishment. Oh, I also wanted to get Kindle Flame, but... Mm -mm. Uh, one point in a Kindle Flame. I mean, he is casting quite a bit, so... Mm, yeah. Uh, you, Harold, you are going through Training, Battlemaster, and... Oh, wait, actually, I lied. You're going through Primeval and into your unique tree. Let's immediately get the Enables Flaming Attacks for Hero's Army, because we just got Kindle Flame. And, ooh, 15 armor for the entire army. I mean, currently our armor is fairly... Our army is fairly heavily armored, but the Marauder Horseman could use a little bit more. I'm actually inclined to say that the 15 armor is probably better. Makes these guys a little bit less fragile. It's good for the giants as well, which only had 40 armor. Why, thank you, Harry. Go hammer smash something. Anyway, uh, Gulator, back to you. Alright, and... Ow! Oh. Okay, no, you could, you can land here, or at least I hope you can. Go grab the Mysterious Island. And... Aggression. The Bloody Red Spot. Passive Ability Frenzy. Frenzied Nurgle Units. Interesting. And a Ranger Standard, which doesn't matter nearly as much. I would like you to go... Right here, and hopefully you can still land. Ah, just short. Just short. <laughs> well, what can you do? Alright, we'll have to waste the turn. Uh, what does he have here? Watch him leave and go to Longship Graveyard. Yeah, oh well, not a big deal. Man, they have Norden as well. Damn, Wolfric. And trying to do as good as uh, Throg he is, and it looks like Throg is bound to take Kislev. We don't actually care about Kislev because it's not a Dark Fortress, but we do care about Throg. All right. Uh, Chronicler, are you ready to do the Blue Scribe thing? No, next turn. He'll get to Arcane's army eventually, and I believe that's all we get. So let's end the turn and let's continue. And I guess regardless of the expense, it's time to get the uh, Coronate army up and running. Uh, Zatan, you want a non-aggression pack? No, we're going to have to attack you with Kolek in order to make sure that you become our vassal. And he actually attacked us with this little tiny army. And it'll kill off our Marauders of Chrono. Oh, man, we're gonna, we have to have to fight this? All right, fine. I'm going to manually... Alright, here we go. Screw it. We can do this one cinematically. As well, I mean, besides, it's, uh, it's Kukar Bloodletters... Bloodletters Blood Eaters, rather. Uh, close enough. Uh, Kukar Blood Eaters debut in his new uh, coronate form. Uh, gotta allow him to enjoy his new armor. Look at him booking it towards the battle uh, with the rest of the uh, coronate marauders. Anyway, we're gonna start the battle off by sending in our very limited number of marauder horsemen. I'm hoping for a good battle still as uh, for those of you who've been watching my campaigns for a while, you'll know that I actually really enjoy uh, the smaller battles with a small number of units. And the thing is, uh, just like in, in Battlefleet Gothic and the same thing in Total Warhammer, uh, the more units you have on the field at once, uh, the more there tends to be the weight of fire issue, as in more units attack and kill f other units faster. Smaller skirmishes and do tend to have uh, epic little fights and last stands between units, where too many units can't help each other and deliver too much damage at the same time. This is particularly true of armies that are full of range units, as the more range units you have at once, and the more likely you can destroy an enemy army before they can even do anything. 
Whereas smaller skirmishes, that isn't really possible, and a single range unit and a couple melee units will duke it out for the duration of most of the battle, and a fairly long duration at that. Anyway, Kukar makes his way in and gets his first blow against that little gobbo who decides, no, you know what, I want no part of this. And he's going to run away while the Night Goblin Squig Hoppers uh, seek to uh, uh, seek to cover his retreat. I think Kukar will be fine with that as he will start working on all of them at once and he's got his own Marauders of Corn to back him up. Over in the background we look like the Night Goblin Squig Hoppers will peel away and go for other Marauders of Corn. We have the uh, uh, the units of the Hounds of the Blood Hunt who have charged in to the enemy unit of Goblin Archers but are going to have to peel away rather than fight them for too long as the enemy Night Goblin Spears are here and we don't want the poor little doggos to get hurt. The Squig Hoppers are sandwiched between several units in a terrible position just like their Night Goblin War Boss who I believe Kukar has pretty much defeated at this point. And if you do leaping attacks like that, you'll end up jumping over the enemy lord. <laughs> oh, sends one of his own marauders flying. Alright, keep working on that uh, on that uh, war boss. In the meantime, the enemy unit of trolls has moved in and is making, if not quick work, bad, uh, applying some good damage to our marauders here. We're going to have to send the regular marauders away. They're not routing, we're just going to back them up while the marauders, the cornate marauders, move in to reinforce. And as soon as Kukar is done with the night goblin war boss, which he is, he'll head into the fray against some tougher targets in those trolls. Too bad though, so this army doesn't have trolls of its own, as it would be nice to see some Norsk or uh, a gob a gob uh, greenskin units of trolls, or regular trolls, I guess, uh, face off against some of our chaos trolls. Anyway, in the meantime, the Night Goblin Squid Coppers have moved away. They are being chased down by the Hounds of the Blood Hunt, etc., but the units of Marauders and that we're facing off against them are now able to move towards those enemy Night Goblins. Lots of little tiny spears against the axes of the Marauders. Well, let's see how those chaos steroids do for them. I do like the uh, sheer disparity in the numbers of the Gabos versus the numbers of Marauders, and this is what I'm talking about with these little battles. Uh, generally, with a bigger battle, this little contest would be over extremely quickly. So it's a nice break. But not to worry, we won't end this episode until we get a big, proper battle with tons of units on the field, either. And the orcs are a pretty good contender for uh, giving us one of those, so and we shall see. Anyway, Galbos continue to fight to the Marauders of Corn. We really gotta. Mm, I've been thinking about switching the two units of Marauders of Corn to specifically the Dual Axe version. A because it's more cornate and feels appropriate, and B because they're awesome at mincing infantry. I think as soon as we get the Searing Branding Iron, we'll probably do that. Could even leave the other two regular Marauders with shields, since they already have those, and just switch these guys to their dual axes. Certainly a possibility as well. Although, oh, wait, does switching the unit type... Well, I guess I was thinking about switching unit type, and would that uh, take away their XP? Because I don't remember. It's been a while since I played Valkia. Or the other Chaos Lords. Anyway. Anyway, with that, the Goblins are finally done having lost about half of their HP, a little bit more, and the rest of the army will shatter as well. Most of our fast movers were just chasing enemies around at that point, and I wanted to let the Marauders and do the work and actually work their way through all those Goblin enemies. Really decent likelihood that we just upgrade the uh, Chaos Warriors or the Marauders of Corn to Chaos Warriors of Corn as soon as we can, and the upgrade can be into dual axes instead. That's another option. Anyway, a little bit of uh, chasing to do, but off screen again. Alright, there we go. I know it was a tiny, tiny battle, but then I decided that it might be good enough to uh, uh, be a cinematic as the enemy army didn't collapse within 30 seconds, and uh, it's still fun to watch our units fight, especially since I like the idea of this army getting a... Uh, 
doing some bloodletting, a sacrifice to corn to get those new gifted units because they were originally given to, I don't know, Archaeon's exploits. So uh, Kuhar had to earn it. Anyway, uh, kill captives will give us physical resistance, but I think despite the relatively small amount of money, we're about to spend a lot of money, so sacrifice the captives. Alrighty, and I frankly forgot that the turn was ending there. Dungrut, do you want us to military access? No, we're probably going to attack you and either take your citadel or uh, force you there. This is another of Archaon's quests. Yeah, it's the Eye of Shirian, but it's going to be a while till we do those. Once again, Archaon's quests are on the more difficult side in terms of the amount of units uh, that are liable to... Uh, uh, be there in those quest battles. Oh, damn, I should have given the Chaos Warriors with Halberds to uh, Kuhar. Well, we'll still have to meet up, so it's fine. Kolek is ready to go, but a little bit iffy on affording him right now. He uh, He's expensive. I suppose we could summon him onto the field and just have him sort of follow Archaon along as well. Just have everybody... Uh, Everybody leech XP from everybody. Also, what did the AI do to Kolek? Let's find out. Uh, huh, and also gave him devoted to Chaos. Uh, or if Chaos is actually probably a good idea on him because of the missile resistance being needed. He is a very, very big target. And then he has his unique tree up and running very, very soon. And Mountain God will give him the free Summoners of Rage, which... How close are we to? Uh, Summoners of Rage, where be you? 22 is the level. Eh, oh, five levels away. Alright, you know what, we'll take a closer look at Colex Tree later. Now, Kukar. Well, let's move you for one second back into our own territory where we can gain access to gifted units. And though this is going to be extremely expensive for us, I do want this army to be able to function on its own, so... Yeah, there we go. We just need to make sure that we, uh... Uh, well... Not undo, but deal with this. You're gonna head to the Eries. And... We're gonna have to fight this as well, really. I thought that with all those extra units you'd be able to. Alright, fine, fine, fine. Uh, looks like it's a Kukar Bloodletter kind of day. Gotta keep earning those uh, uh, corn stripes. Uh, let's get you Dominating Presence. Uh, let's get you Chaos Vanguard. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have troops in addition yeah chaos vanguard uh you're gonna have troops in addition to all those doggos plus where's doggo and where's the doggo buff it's this one armor for all demonic units and charge bonus well i wouldn't say no to the armor but for now this is what we're going with we should also get you some kind of sorcerer that buffs you and uh, away we go another little tiny fight Ah, that's what I like to hear, my friend. Here we go. I know it's another smaller battle, but you know what? With every one of these smaller battles, uh, this particular episode, we are getting in the debut of a new unit. First to Zazel, then Kukar in his coronate form, and now the Skull Cannons, as well as the piles of uh, Flesh Hands. Skull Cannons are starting the battle off, especially with their speed, them being mobile artillery. Uh, they can annoy enemy units like these Boar Boys and knock out some of their models, in fact dropping them to half HP reasonably quickly. And the speed being 70, the Skull Cannons can either fight in melee or just get the heck out of there as they please. Over on this side we have the Doggos menacing another unit of Orc Boys. Two units of Marauder Horsemen led the Orc Boars away from the rest of the army, at which point the Chaos Hound, not the Chaos Hounds, the Flesh Hounds of Corn will surround and destroy them. Out here we have a unit of Night Gabo Archers isolated in the Night Ga and the Night Gabos will feed Feel the wrath of those flesh hounds as they are unsupported as well. Speaking of the wrath of the flesh hounds, moving on in, especially with the hounds of the blood hunt here to lead the rest of the flesh hounds. 
And with several flesh hounds attacking each boar boy, this is not going to be very good for said boar boys, whose formation also got broken up and by virtue of them chasing the uh, uh, the marauder horses, which is most definitely going to work in our favor. There we go, all the good doggos vying for supremacy and Korn's master. He does love his doggos. After all, looks like the enemy orc boar boys did shatter. We did allow our uh, skull cannons to fight in melee for a little bit, but uh, soon the orc boys shattered with the help of the marauder horses. And now the skull cannons can switch fire. Gonna try to do a little bit of damage to the enemy black orc big boss. Maybe I should have just kept firing at the uh, various enemy units, but I wanted to see how effective the skull cannons would be against a single target. And generally, I do like to use them against artillery, and, or artillery, uh, cavalry and things like that, because as an artillery that can get quickly or reposition themselves quickly, it uh, is quite useful to knock things out uh, that are a threat to other artillery and to the, uh, uh, to the back lines and flanks and such. Anyway, looks like the Black Orc Big Boss is suffering damage, dropping down to about 60% HP, and I'm sure will drop down to full. The rest of our army, uh, despite being coordinate, is not yet entered combat and is staying on the high ground on top of this hill. Kukar, however, booking it forward now that he has a steed, he can get bit to battle all that much faster, and he doesn't care for the uh, smaller piles of Orc Boys and will instead head directly for the enemy war boss. Don't you run from Kukar. You're supposed to want to scrap, and he wants a scrap as well. And there we go. A Black Orc Big Boss facing off against a, uh, a champion, an exalted hero of Korn. I mean, technically it's a Chaos Lord of Korn, so... Nah. <laughs> I got too used to Ograx and Archaeon's army and saying uh, he's an exalted hero, but now we have lots of coronate units. And by lots, I mean two. Anyway, these two will continue exchanging blows for a while, both of them having a little bit of a difficult time actually landing him, while the Orc Boys and... just Orc Boys? make their way into the fray. And Bloodletters riding around on their skull cannon motorcycles, annoying those piles of enemies and doing their spins to win, disrupting their formation and doing a little bit of melee damage. There we go. All the while, of course, our flesh hands are running around in the background, making sure that any unit that routes and does not return and running them down while taking care of any isolated range units and things like that. But I wanted to see the Skull Cannons, and damn well are we going to see the Skull Cannons, both in melee and in range. How's that enemy Black Orc Big Boss still fighting? Huh. This is kind of interesting. These two have been exchanging blows for like a minute or two straight, and have barely hurt one another. Now, there could be an issue with their models. Maybe the Black Orc Boss's model is the perfect size for the... Uh, uh, for the mounted lord to have an issue actually hitting him. Or maybe it had something to do with the terrain, but yeah, they were fighting each other for a very long time there. Anyway, while they, while they may have been fighting each other for a very long time, the same thing cannot be said of the rest of the battle as the Flesh Hands cleaned up all the enemy units that were routing, rear charged the last remaining unit of Orc Boys that were running from the, uh, uh, from the Skull Cannons, and with that, the enemy army will shatter. Lovely. Another little fight, but another a nice one. It's nice to see those Skull Cannons. I'd like to get at least a few more into this army later on. We are limited by six units, but we do have an outpost of corn, so we can corn our, this army up as much as we want. All right, hopefully the auto-resolve doesn't go completely nuts with underestimating the flush hounds, because, yeah, stop that auto-resolve. Anyway, nice little uh, battle. One of the uh, doggos got 154 and one got 178 kills. Very nice uh, to the both of you, though the, you were all out-damaged by the skull cannon. Though hard to say whether you were out-damaged by the skull cannon in range or in melee, as it was able to do both things throughout the battle. We're going to occupy the place and I'm sure trade it to one of our allies. Allies. And ooh, now that's a nice pickup. The other trickster shard is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, 
We'll put it on Prince Ogrex for now. Though more likely than not, we'll probably give it to Village or somebody, so, or one of his followers, as that they buff him a little bit more. Uh, Kuhar, is there anybody near you? No, you should just head to uh, Black Fang, and I guess you can heal up as well. We're still bleeding cash, and minus 23. This got worse. Well, that's not nice. That's not nice at all. And who's to the south of you? Who's in the gates of Jar? Is it a Skaven faction? Uh, I see Skaven corruption. All right, well. We may have to fight Clan Rictus and whatever other Skaven factions are around here because, well, the Chaos Dwarfs aren't going to uh, like them. Though, I suppose if we vassalize them all, who knows. Anyway, uh, you to the Granite Spikes. Let's complete that uh, Blue Scribes quest there. Blue Scribes seek a place to collect their parchments. And the next quest, Shaman's Temple must be constructed as a tier 4 building, so it'll be a while. In fact, uh, we'll give this a read once we've completed it, because it's going to be ages from now when we get that tier 4. Anyway, Chronicler, you need to head down to Archeon and chronicle his deeds. And you, sir, want to fight all the orcs here at Blackfang. Let's destroy Mr. Zok first. A little bit of help from... Co oh, cool, I can't move this turn, can I? Only Archaon can. Wait, but Kolek, can you go close enough to a... No, not this way. Damn it. Is this close enough? No, wait, 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 wait. I want him to leech the XP and... Ow! You can't move back into the settlement. Huh, I wonder why. Okay, well then. I give up. I give up. I wonder how much this is going to hurt us, but we just fought a couple small battles, so I don't think we need to uh, fight another. Well, more than I'd like, but less than it could have been, so we're fine. And let's sacrifice those captives once more, because we need the cash. Ever do we need the cash? And can you reach Black Fang in a single go? No. And rather than raiding, I think you're going to have to use your time to heal here, so you can head to Black Fang next turn. Why, hello, Mr. Ugg. Well, you're going to make this battle a lot more interesting because there's trolls and stuff. Okay, good. I was worried that we wouldn't get a big fight in this episode, but by the looks of it, we most definitely are. No dragon ogres available for Kola, okay? Well, I guess we can't really afford them technically anyway, but uh, still, something to look out for. We could upgrade our Marauder Horseman. Uh, what's the cost to another 75 gold per unit? You know what, I think we'll hold off. Azazel and Gulator, you are going to land a Dietershofen, and I see nobody there. Mm, they might be moving to Nordland, Norden, rather. I think you have no choice but to land, so land ye shall, besiege this, and then you will land right beside him to leech. It'll be a while before we work through Wolfric's stuff. He's not willing to. No, he's not even willing to peace out. I was wondering if he'd be willing to peace out and become our vassal soon once we take his dark fortress, but apparently not the case. Alrighty, how to resolve this? Ranger standard to the very very slow bu. <laughs> uh, for all the king bubonicers, how to resolve? Okay, yeah, no, no real damage there. And occupied uh, so that we can sail out. And Rod of Torment. Ooh, at least we're getting good items uh, this time around. Uh, this gives you a bombardment spell ability. Hmm. Although, who to give this to? I mean, I guess we could give this to Azazel. Magic item drop chance increase. Rod of Torment. Sounds kind of slanashy. Could be, could be. All right, now let's do that. And while he's backing up Gulator's army, for a while our legendary lords will have to play second fiddle to our uh, to our generated lords, at least until we can afford their armies. Though it's looking a little bit better. We're at minus six oh eight now, so not as bad. All righty. Uh, how's our public order looking here? Minus four. I think I wanted to actually delete the f not the fighters lodge, but the bloody barracks here. Because we don't really need it. Uh, Saber Mountains, just the outpost being built. Blood Marshes, we could upgrade the loot heap, but I think it's not worth our time. Uh, there's other... There's other buildings that we could upgrade, but they're so horrendously expensive that I don't think that we can afford it right now. 
I'd rather more armies. And yes, yes, we need to build all those things up, but we need a good sacking of a good uh, expensive location where we can get like 20k for it. And that would be just swell. Or encounter, encounter a Skull Island or something and then use that to fund uh, the uh, and the various Dark Fortresses. Anyway, let's double check Diplo. No trading and we weren't gonna. Ah, I grief. Probably gonna have to attack you as well. Can't have you occupying all those dark fortresses, and Grimgore wants to peace out, but as for him, we do not. Looks like there's nothing to do uh, this particular turn. I also want to see Harry Hammer Smash in action, so... Uh, skip, skip, outpost available, skip and turn. Alright, Ugg, head to Black Fang, if you would. I hope he doesn't run. He does not run. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Hmm. And this also likely indicates that Grimgore has a full stack somewhere else away from us. Golden Order has confederated Vissenland. I don't want to trespass in these guys' territory. Hmm. And they won't give us military access, which is a bit of a shame. Hey, can you go into March Dance? You can, but it will leave you in their territory. I guess we go the long way around. That's fine. That's fine. And like so, Arcan, you are moving in. Let's get that big fight going. And we'll have Koleg join you in March stance, but join you nonetheless. Alright, so. Heroic victory. I will see about that. Hey, we are hurt. Koleg, into March stance, and let's do your items before we send you in. Oh damn, I should have had Azazel attack the other location rather than uh, Gulator, but oh well. Uh, details, you have a Ruby Ring of Ruin. No, and an Obsidian Lodestone should go to a Mage. I had given the Talisman of Endurance to Azazel, but frankly Azazel, no. Uh, you don't need it as much. Alright, now, Scepter of Stability and Skull of Katam. I don't care for the Scepter of Stability. Skull of Katam can be useful for Mages, however. I was thinking of deleting it. Potion of Foolhardiness, pretty useless. Let's take you and the Ruby Ring of Ruin out. And yes, the Ruby Ring isn't as useless as it was, but nonetheless. Alright, uh, basic armor. I guess we could give you the helm of many eyes. Mm, an enchanted item. Well, you don't need the terrifying mask of evil. Let's get you the, the, the Iron Curse icon. I'll we'll probably trade you the Potion of Toughness once Harkon gets a Potion of Healing. Alright, and the rest of this, I think, can be foregone. Oh, good enough. Good enough. And our mage, our new mage, is not close enough yet, but he'll get there. Alright, Harkon, time for you to get a nice fight going and finish leveling these Marauder Horsemen up so that they can start take getting Knights level. Knight levels, rather. Go. What do we have inside? Oh, wow. Okay, I can see why it says close... It said Pyrrhic victory and then close victory. This is a lot of orcs, and there's a lot of boar boys uh, to consider. Should be a fun fight. Go. Alrighty, man. Arkan certainly likes to concur, but anyway, here we go. Here is the blood you were promised, folks, as there are so, so many enemy works to take care of between the two enemy stacks. We're going to have to melee our way through them, and our army remains a little bit hurt, which will make it a little bit more challenging. On top of that, we tried the uh, Chaos Lord of Corn, we tried Azazel, we tried the Skull Cannons today, and trying stuff out is going to continue as Kolek will enter the fray and help Archeon out. Alright, Archeon first into battle, quickly followed by Ograx as well, as they're going to start laying into the enemy trolls and orcs, while the aspiring champions, armored Chaos Trolls and the Chaos Warriors, general Chaos Warriors, follow along. And I did say, I think, in an earlier battle that I wanted Chaos Trolls versus, uh, uh, versus non-Chaos Trolls. And this is what we get. Oh, lovely. 
All right, though, the aspiring champions are going to be helping out against the trolls as well, and the presence of both Archaeon and Ograx here is also not something that the enemy will uh, will be allowed to ignore. Anyway, this pile of units is pretty much done for, even if the battle is just beginning. Kolek has entered the field as well, and will try to make his way to the fray as fast as he can. Once again, we'll be seeing that contrast of fire and lightning, and it'll be nice to see the two work together before they inevitably uh, go in separate directions likely never to meet again on the battlefield. Kolek and Archeon, I mean, because they'll be going in different ways. Anyway, I see enemy Orc Error boys running from one of our twin giants here as well as the Chaos Warriors and beneath them. And there have been many name suggestions for the twin giants already and I don't know, I'm still thinking about that one. I've grown kind of fond of them. And I may have to pick a name, or we may have to uh, give them legendary names. We'll see, depending on how their feats uh, look. Out here we have our Chaos Knights fighting by themselves, holding off a massive pile of units. But of course it's the Swords of Chaos and the Knights of Zinch here. And despite the giant pile of orcs, I think they will do and just fine. The barrier on the Knights of Zinch is uh, down, but the enemy still has to work through all that armor. And the armor piercing on the regular orc boys is going to be... Yeah, a relatively light at least compared to the amount that you'd need to easily dispatch a unit of Chaos Knights of Zinch or and the Swords of Chaos. Now, the Swords of Chaos are getting a little bit blocked by the Knights and maybe I should have just sent them around uh, to hit the enemy here. On the other hand, we do have Searing Dooms to drop like this and our current formation allows us to, uh, uh, to force the enemy into a blob. Anyway, Kolek has entered the foray together with Archeon, but right now the enemy units are simply breaking and before them and not really allowing us to get into combat at least for too long but not to worry oh that looked painful uh, but not to worry there's plenty more orcs to work through as we move through the settlement and it looks like a couple of units are going to be blocking us off right after this uh, uh, right after this bridge and it also looks like the chaos knights have made their way through most of the units out here and are getting ready to join Archaon on the field as well uh, very very nice also, all this time, this entire battle so far, the Hell Cannon has just been firing away and damaging units. It's already got 221 kills and 37k damage, and with every blow like that, it's looking like it's adding a pretty decent pile of corpses to the uh, to the tally. Anyway, Archaon and Kolek are into the settlement proper now and are going to be heading forward and towards, I guess, the main miner supply location. There's still a decent pile of orc units that are sort of peeled away from where we're currently assaulting. And the enemy isn't really sending them to deal with us yet, but I think they will eventually. Oh, look at Kolek's tail. He's a, he's a he's a happy he's a happy mountain god. Anyway, Archeon once again uh, leading at the pack as he does, running gobos and orcs down as he heads into the battle. And Kolek following along. All right, a few more blows from him. How are we doing out here? The enemy lord is running. Some orc boys are back and ah, but sooner or later, they're going to have to stand and fight. Now that the knights are no longer busy, they can also move a little bit faster and catch up with Archeon. Though it's once again interesting to see it's the Zinchin knights uh, rather than the Swords of Chaos that lead. But the Swords of Chaos are following along as well. Also, more likely than not, we're going to have to split this army in two to go into uh, multiple directions, as once again, there are a lot of orcs still on the field, and we're going to need to clear them out semi-systematically. Over in the background, we can still see arrow fire being exchanged, as well as the uh, uh, the Hell Cannon still firing on the enemy. It, that thing's going to have plenty of kills after the end of this particular battle. There we go. I just saw it get a nice hit on two units as well. Anyway, continuing to make our way up the rap and ah, finally, an orc, uh, an orc boys unit, two orc boys units, are finally willing to stand and Archeon Ograx and their knights will make their way into the fray once more and oh my lord Kolek. <laughs> Sometimes you forget how, how much of a big boy he is. 
as he makes his way through the night. At least that's nice. His animations allow him seemingly to not get blocked by the knights, but rather walk right through them. We've seen it uh, be an issue where a few of our units will block each other off and not allow each other to attack. For example, the trolls and the other knights will get stuck behind the knights of Zinch, but it seems it's not an issue for Kolek. I guess he could just walk over or... Uh, damn, look at that splash damage. Uh, that is pretty nice. That uh, that seems to be possibly more than uh, than Torox does. I wonder what a contest between Torox and uh, Kolek would look like in the game, I mean. Who would win in a one-on-one -on -one and who would win at mincing infantry? Uh, they're both quite good at both. And being very nice, uh, being very nice all around, lords. Anyway, it looks like the York boys that stood in Archeon's way for just a little bit have broken, and we're going to continue making our way up the ramp, but have peeled our army, or part of our army, off and split it in two. One of the other Chaos Giants will lead a pile of the uh, Chaos Warriors, and, of course, we'll have Mr. Harold Hammerstorm here to lead them. Since Kolek and Archeon and Ograx are all the way over there, Harald will lead the uh, Chaos Warriors into the fray. It's kind of get a, kind of difficult to get a good shot on him because it's a minor settlement and the camera is always wonky and due to the pathing. But not to worry, we'll have plenty of shots of Harald throughout the campaign. It's not like he's going anywhere. Especially since it seems quite beneficial to keep him in this particular army. Although I suppose he'd be quite useful in any army. I mean, if we wanted to put him into a Zinshin army, we could uh, uh, we could increase the usage of the various fire abilities as well. And get more usage of the combined lore of Zinch and uh, the use of Kindle Flame. Kind of like we're planning for Archaea. Um, but anyway, Giant lays into the enemy who are once again ready to uh, join combat, which I'm um, quite happy about. Hotald is trying to make his way through the press of Chaos Warriors who are unblocking him. Unlike Kolek, he's going to have a difficult time actually uh, making his way in, but that's alright. None of these guys are really all that threatening to this pile of Chaos Warriors and aspiring champions and whatnot. We just gotta be careful to make sure that the Giant doesn't get surrounded and damaged. Mount's power has shifted to about 75% in our favor, and Archeon has made his way up another ramp where even more Orc Boys and some Night Goblin Squig Hoppers, up oh, this is a Squig Herd, are actually attempting to block us off. Collect, however, is also a living battering ram, so I'm sure that helps out when there are massive piles of units to deal with, and with all that splash damage he deals, I'm sure that's what he prefers as well. All right, Kolek, get an actual kid in there. There you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, this, uh, part oh, wow, he actually got up from that. But, uh, yeah, I look how that one unit uh, went flying, that one orc boy. There we go. That's the splash we wanted. Good job, Kolek. You gotta earn your army, my friend. And don't just assume we'll give you an army by virtue of your existence. All right, and the giant being no slouch either, getting splash damage on the enemy, and Archaon also uh, doing some work, I'm sure. His splash damage ain't too bad either, though the Gabo models are small, so a lot of them and do go flying at once. There we go. This must be an awful battlefield for a pile of Gabos to be in. I guess most battlefields are awful battlefields for a pile of Gabos to be in, especially, uh, especially outside of the underway, but, you know. What can you do? Alrighty, and some more Orc Boys have managed to make it into the fray and hopefully uh, stand up to us for a, a little bit longer. But once again, the, uh, uh, the armor on us is going to be a little bit too heavy for them to easily deal with. Another Searing Doom is going to come down into the big blob of enemy Orc Boys here. And we're going to pop the uh, Flaming Sword of Ruin on the entire army to buff everybody up. Making Kolek hit for 1.3k between Starcraft Crusher and that flaming sword. Pretty darn nice. How much does the giant hit for? 851. Huh, I wonder if that's lower than the savage giants. 
Make a little bit of a comparison at some point between the uh, Savage Giants and the uh, and the Chaos Giants. Ah, Archeon doing a little bit of casting, getting a burning head through the pile of enemy units. He does like his fire spells after all, but it looks like the enemy Orc Boys, most certainly, and do not as most of them seem to rout as soon as they get hit by the burning head. In fact, after they, after they saw Arcane, uh, Archeon's Arcane Mastery, I guess the rest of the entire enemy army, and decides to rout, and the battle is ours. Very nice. I did promise a, a bigger battle, and we certainly got one. Didn't really get to see Harold uh, get to work here, but, uh, well, uh, we'll get to that another time. Anyway, no need to chase units, as it is a settlement battle, so we're good to go. Apparently a close victory, but I don't think we took so much damage, as we used both mana and pretty much all the ammunition on our Hell Cannon as well. In fact, I think it ran out of ammunition, so that's probably where it's getting. Uh, this uh, this ruling. All right, very, very nice. 4,000 enemy orcs versus our 500-ish uh, units, and that is a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice number sort of thing, as in the hordes of the orcs should most definitely outnumber. Yes, so that felt very appropriate. Uh, however, the problem for them was that they faced off against both Archeon and Coleg, just those two alone, each one a a walking army, a one or, or a walking disaster, a one man or whatever the heck, or one Shagoth army. Uh, so even without the rest of our army, I'm sure the two would have destroyed the enemy over a very long, long battle. Anyway, looks like we got 80,000 damage on Archie and 33, nearly 34k on Kolik as well. Uh, 20 and 11k on our Chaos Trolls, which did fairly nicely. And ooh, one of our giants did 24k as as well. Uh, 51k on the Chaos Knights of Zinch. Damn, uh, that's quite a bit. And lastly, the two units of Aspiring Champions, 13 and 15k as well. So, uh, definitely standouts uh, right there. Basically, all of our more elite units stood out. Oh, and 62k on the Hell Cannon, but the Hell Cannon always does well, so that's kind of unfair. Uh, and we're actually probably going to transfer the trolls into Kolex army. So we'll have room for a few other things in our cans. We do want more knights in his army, so we'll need another Marauder Horseman at the very least. And then there's room for the mage, so we know where we're sending the uh, trolls. Anyway, we're going to take the place over and not sack it because it's not worth it. At this time, Armor of Domination, Passive Ability, Armor, Damage Resistance, eh, kind of meh. I think these smaller territories are not worth sacking in the sense that they will cost money to rebuild, and as they currently are, let me just check here, would you be willing to take any of this? Minus 50 and minus 50, I think you can't give these guys settlements in order to confed them, which is a bit of a shame, but what can you do? Anyway, anyway, with that, we are most, we are very much out of time, and I'm actually going to have to call uh, the episode here, and next time, I think we'll probably do our best to try to send Kuhar, probably with Kolek together, uh, southward to deal with the rest of these guys. I would have loved to have fought uh, Grimgor with Archeon, but he's not here. Maybe he's down at the Firemount or somewhere else he has three territories left he's probably alive do we want his defeat trait that badly i mean archaeon versus grimgor is uh, lawfully a thing that should happen but what if he's dead hmm you know what what do you guys think do we head down to the fire mouth and then i mean i guess we could and then go into the Wolflands and go up like this to give these territories to our Chaos Dwarf allies. It's certainly a possibility. 
Oh, although I just realized we need to figure out a way to actually transfer them to them. Might have to force them directly to occupy it. Maybe a little bit of a detour for Archaon to try to fight and find Grimgore wouldn't be the worst, worst thing in the world. But in the meantime, Azazel and Gulator will continue destroying the World Walkers. Hopefully pick us up a few more of these dark fortresses. I know that there's another one up there. And once World Walkers are sufficiently damaged, we'll probably delete the defensive alliance with uh, Thragi, sorry Thragi, in order to take a few of the territories back from him, but hopefully we'll have more armies at that point. Anyway, more Archaon and Kolek and Azazel and Gulator and Harold and Ogrex, lots of named characters to come and lots more to be acquired, so we gotta catch them all. All glory to the algorithm. Likes and comments below for the hour, and thanks for watching.